we're back again at stage two and we're beginning with this pale bright green which uh, is receiving sunlight so I'm including a, a lot of yellow in this and I'm bringing it next to the shadow up above and these darker grasses in the foreground a little bit behind the boat and I'll be tossing in a few other colors to make it more interesting but basically taking care of this uh, foreground area I'll be spending a bit of time to adjust the dark that I placed uh, deal with the grass that's in front a little better and to try to make it um, a smooth entry into the painting the brush strokes that I'm using uh, reflecting grass and I'm placing lights and darks in proximity to each other so that they, they blend a little bit. I want there to be a feeling of shadow coming in from the left side and uh, helping to focus on that bright area uh, around the boats so that we have a natural draw to that area. So while the paint is wet I'm adding a little bit of color to the foreground and then some darks into that complementing the boat now with a, an even darker shadow and these, the not shadow reflection these reflections that we're painting are going to be uh, dry reflections hard edged reflections and we have a choice in painting water to use a soft reflection or a, a hard reflection if it's a really calm body of water which this tends to be a uh, hard edge reflection seems to look a little more natural. So I'm doing that here, being careful to give a, a little bit of a wavy edge and a vertical feeling to the reflection as I'm adding the color. Working now with some strong darks. These are probably the strongest darks in the painting. Under the boat, uh, inside the interior, on the tip of the boat to bring it forward and um, cement this as a sort of center of interest. Uh, there's a number of um, pilings that stick out of the water used to tie up a boat or to connect a pier or whatever. It's, it's a really common scene when you're near a wharf or a, a body of water where there's people with boats. These pilings are creating an opportunity for repeated shapes as well. So I add a few towards the back and I'll even include some I made the, the pipe at the top of the roof a little bigger to be in harmony with the shape and i have also going to add some um, masts which weren't there but I think reflect the shape of the pilings as well. Beginning the reflection on the far bank which will again be hard-edged and this is, is going to help to kind of bring the center of interest more towards that dory that's tilted up on the bank. We give a little bit of a dark edge and this is exaggerated from what was there. I'm just bringing it a little more to the into the painting so that we feel again something's being reflected here, a tree that's overhead, uh, some more grasses on the right hand side all this uh, is a shape that was there but it's being pushed slightly to the left to give a more impressive shape in the water and also move our attention more to the the left think of it as a bookend again I'm giving a little bit of a, a wiggly edge or a feeling of just slight ripples in the water as a result of uh, the edge of the reflection The same with the reflection of the piling coming straight down. And now this is starting to have a finished appearance. At this point, it's going to be adjustments. Places, here's one of those masts in the background that I was talking about. A big mast for the sailing vessel and some that are in the distance. These help to create uh, an interesting rhythm in the painting. And there you have it. This is the finished painting of the Essex Boatyard. 
and that big shape that we started with is holding together pretty well. It is broken up by smaller shapes, but the big shape is what's keeping this painting together.